Hey, TGIF, and thanks for joining me today on Fridays with Flora. Um, in this installment today, we're going to do some crafting. If you've been following the blog and this channel, you know that I'm a big thrifter and upcycler. I like to um, check out, I'm sorry, it looks like it's going to thunder and lightning outside. <laughs> outside. It's probably getting really dark in here anyway. Um, what was I saying? So if you've been to the channel, you know that I'm a big upcycler. I like to go to thrift stores um, and I don't know, I like to save money and I like to be creative. And, and in doing these things, I end up with unique creative pieces for my home. And I'm a very creative person, so I like to have my home reflect that. Um, so we have an old lamp that I was going to give to Goodwill from the Pottery Barn, actually. It was my daughter's lamp that she grew out of, and it's a really nice lamp. So I was going to paint the base and come up with a new lampshade and do some creative embellishments on the shade um, with some embroidery work and see how that works. So why don't you come join me and we'll have a go at upcycling an old lamp. All right, so here's our lamp and here's what we need to rehab it to match. Our guest room has a lot of grays and a lot of reds and this is a pottery barn lamp which I just didn't have the heart to get rid of. So I was thinking we'll get rid of the shade and we'll just chalk paint the base which is like this wooden resin material which we'll um, take to the chalk paint just fine. And what we're going to do is a dual tone chalk paint to bring out some of the grays and then the white. We're going to do a chalk paint that's gray on the bottom and then go over it with white and then we're going to sand off certain areas to bring up some of the gray from the bottom. And then I found a lampshade. This was like 10 bucks at Target and we're going to pop it on top and we're going to do some embroidery on the lampshade to bring in some of the red colors and a little bit of the gray. And I'll show you how to do that. And it'll just be a completely new lamp. So let's get to it. First and foremost, obviously take the shade off. We're gonna tape off certain areas that we don't want paint on, like our cord and this area up here. Um, and make sure it's clean. So you just get some dish soap um, and wipe it down so that there's no oils or um, dust. And then get a chip brush and we'll get our first coat painted. Okay, so we've taped off the top. We've taped off the electrical cord. Just have a plain old chip brush and we're just going to put that gray down. I don't freak out, it's gonna look messy. I don't know if you've seen some of my other um, chalk paint how-to videos, but the first coat's always the worst. But that's okay, because we're just, we're putting this coat down to bring kind of a second color into the distressing anyway, and it's the first coat. There you go, the gray is on, and you can see it's streaky, but don't worry about it. Wash your brush, because we're gonna go to the white layer. Let this sit for about, <clears throat> this should take about 30 minutes to kind of dry and set, and then we can go to our second coat. All right, it's been about <clears throat> 40 minutes or so, and our first coat's dry. Yes, it's streaky, no big deal, <clears throat> but we're gonna put our our main coat, the main color you want for the base, which is for us a nice white color. And just put it on. There you have it. There's your uh, second coat in white. Not as streaky, but still a little streaky. I mean, the beauty of the cho of chalk paint is it's self leveling kind of self-priming so it'll level out and by the third coat it should be good to go sometimes by the third coat I'm not feeling too good about it so I'll even go with a fourth but let's see how things go um, so I'm gonna let this sit for another 30 dry up and set a little bit before we do our second coat here's a trick <clears throat> I'm gonna be using the same color on this brush you know when I used the gray layer I 
I cleaned the brush for the white, but now I'm gonna be using white again. Rather than spending time cleaning it, I'm gonna take a plastic bag, wrap it tightly, and pop it in the fridge. It won't dry out, and actually you could do this for, um, I've actually done this where I've left it for about a week and it was still soft. It keeps the um, paint pliable and the brush workable. So yeah, it's a little lazy, but you know what? You can serve water and um, saves time, especially if you're gonna use the same color for the next coat. So this is gonna get popped in the fridge and we're going to come back to it in about three. Things seem pretty dry. I'm going to get my brush out of the plastic bag that was sitting in the fridge for our third coat. I'm going to scoot this up a little closer just so you can see. It's still a little streaky, but it's, it's starting to even out a little bit. So this third coat should really neaten things up. For the base, I'm kind of going laying a coat against the grain, going up and down, if you will. I mean, there isn't much grain, so to speak, so I'm kind of going counter, and then go over that area, kind of with. And it gives you a nice clean layer. Now, when you think you're done, again, go under Take a look under everything and just make sure you've got all the little nooks and crannies because this is your final coat. So this is your last chance to make sure that everything is clean as a whistle. Okay, so we'll let that sit. This time we are going to clean this. I don't think I'm going to need a fourth coat um, and just Keep in mind, the more coats you put on, the more elbow grease you're gonna need to distress areas because you're gonna have more layers of paint to sand off. So um, I'm gonna probably, you know, go in and distress, you know, extruding areas to make it look like, you know, natural wear and tear, like in here, a little bit on the base, just to give it a little character and bring out the gray because the gray is pretty and it's gonna match my lampshade. All right, join me in a few while we let this set with our third coat. How nice and smooth it is. It's all dry and set. So now we're going to distress it. You um, don't need to distress it if you don't want to. I kind of like the look of it, so I'm going to do that. I have two grits. This is a coarse grit sandpaper. I've got a fine grit. Now depending on kind of look you're looking for. As you can see here, that gives you a rough grit. Then you can go over it and smooth it out with a fine grit. And blend it a little bit more. The rougher grit is bringing up a little bit too much. So I'm going to ease up on, I'm gonna use probably the finer grit throughout the piece. Cause I don't wanna go all the way down to the green, right? I just want some of the gray. All right, I have just enough distressed areas. Let's see here on the base. So I don't wanna to go too crazy. So I have a damp, paper towel, and I'm just going to take all the residue off. What this also does is it gives you a clear idea on what's distressed, because sometimes the more subtle stuff gets covered up with dust, so. And that way you can see if, you, if there's certain areas you want to go over. again. 
and you know after wiping it down you can see you know even the subtle areas make sure that you're kind of done distressing um, we're going to seal it up now with some some wax which is a cream wax that I use from the same brand of the Americana decor give it a good shake this is a wax brush it's got a flat head and if you've seen some of my other chalk paint how to's on my channel kind of go into this a little bit more in depth and how to use the cream wax and how to use brown wax so if you're really getting into this chalk paint trend be sure to check out some of my other projects I've rehabbed a um, rocking chair a nightstand a mirror um, it's really a versatile technique um, this is kind of my wax my waxing plate you can see there's some brown wax on here find just a disposable plate you can use a paper plate um, and I kind of just use this all the time so rather than like being wasteful. I'm going to scoot this back so you can see what I'm doing. The key is to use your flat side of your brush. Move some of the wax to the side. You want a thin coat. And then you're going to use circular motions. And a little goes a long way. Now have a clean, damp cloth handy. Because as you work this in, you want a thin layer, but you don't want clumps because it gets sticky and tacky and you don't want that kind of on your piece. So have it handy and wipe off any access as you go, like so. And keep going down. So the, the fun part about this project is, you know, we're replacing the shade from this to this. And this has, you know, nice cleaner lines. It's a little bit more elegant. It's got that beautiful gray that comes from, if you recall from the beginning of the video, you know, some of these really pretty colors in here. The other thing that I've loved about this sheet set, which by the way, you can get at Ikea. So a bargain on top of it but look at these just beautiful flower patterns and I wanted I was inspired by the embroidery of the original shade and I'm thinking well why not do some embroidery on here to bring in some of these colors to the lamp and kind of you know, start pulling the room together so I went to the local craft store and I got some embroidery thread to match. I brought the pillowcase to the store and I got the colors I needed. And what I'd like to do, so I made a plan. If you can see here. So I'm going to do something like this. I need to shrink it down a little bit. And I'm probably not going to do this giant flower on the corner because I'll lose my mind. So I'll probably bring it over here. And maybe I'll bring some of these over. And then I might carry over some more to the other sides. But what I'm thinking is doing some stitching in the gray to create stems. These are going to be ribbon, which hopefully I have some upstairs in the craft room for leaves. And I'm gonna embroidery with a thick needle, um, a flower design, and then I'm also gonna create little petals out of um, scrap fabric. 
and then I'm going to use Fabric Fusion to tack them on. So let's see. Hopefully I don't trash the shade. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I've got um, my needle threaded with some embroidery thread. I'm going to start kind of with the structure of my design, meaning kind of the stems of everything. And I'm going to start with my flower, but I'm going to work um, for my flower down because I want to be able to make room for this. And I'm going to use a back stitch for the stems. And then I'm, I'm going to use a stem stitch for kind of the flower outline up top there. That way there's a little bit of differentiation. Um, I am kind of a newbie at embroidery, so don't be mistaken. I know enough to be dangerous. Um, I'm more of a sewer seamstress, but um, a back stitch is a back stitch. So knowing that I kind of want you know my flower around here, I'm gonna probably start this main stem there. So I'm going to kind of poke through, and I have a knot at the end of this. And if need be, if your shade is a little bit tough, you can always use a thimble to kind of help push. So far, this seems to be okay. So I've got this going, and I kind of have to look behind here because you know this isn't fabric, so it's not as pliable as you kind of want it to be. So it's a little bit of clunky stitching, but it'll work. So just keep going. Um, I sort of, I was thinking about doing a little bit of a, a pencil line, but I'm afraid I don't want to mess up the shade. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to kind of have it swoop around this way and then end it and then do a curly cue down here. All right, I'm finished on this one stem. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm in the back of the shade right now and I'm just going to kind of use my needle to create a little bit of a knot. All right, I spent some time, you know, obviously this being the main central area, and then I wrapped around to the corners some other stems. So it just kind of, you know, starts here and then filters off. So that's the back stitch. Now, I think to get things moving along, I'm going to use the stem stitch and do the main flower. Once I get the main flower in there, I'll figure out what I want to do. Because that's where it Um, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of matching the, um, the flower on the linens. So if you feel more comfortable, you can use a pencil. You know what? And I think I might, I think I might very delicately. So let me grab a pencil. So you can see here, I did something really delicate. So at least I've got an outline to follow. So doing a back stitch almost, but when you come through, now you're under, you're gonna come back out at the center. So you're gonna have to really work with, do you see what I did there? And keep, 
keep your extra thread along the bottom. Move back like so. Come back out halfway through. And again, you're going to probably have to, because this is a lampshade, we're not, we're not using fabric, so it does make things clunky, but we're halfway through. Keep your extra thread along the bottom. It's getting caught on something. You can see what happens. You have a really nice, and you might want to keep your stitches a little bit tighter, but you have a nice clean line. It's good for outlining and creating designs. So following the little pencil drawing that I have, which is gonna be super helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and outline out my flower. So that's my bottom rung of my flower. Now I'm going to take kind of my coral pink and I don't know if you can see the pencil, but I've got another rung of petals up there. So I'm going to continue. <clears throat> So um, I've got this little wonky little flower, which is fine. I kind of liked the, I don't know, a little bit of an organic feel to it. I've decided I wanted to put a little bit of a center piece right there. A ribbon and a thread. And I'm going to, I just went zigzag, zigzag through the ribbon. To create a little bit of a flourish. Now I'm going to knot it and get some fabric fusion. I just dropped my needle, sorry. So it's a little bit of like a fan. If you. All right, this is sort of dry and I'm going to take a little bit of the ribbon and I'm going to make some, some leaves. <clears throat> this is the first time I'm going to try this. So I think I want a leaf right there and you can use different thicknesses. And you know what, before I do anything, how about I put a knot? <laughs> Duh, let's put a knot at the end of our ribbon. All right. Once you go in and you go back down, you've got a loop. Go to the end of where your leaf is going to end, but don't pull all the way through just yet. That was a mistake I made. Take this. Now, pull through. See the little leaf you got? And then finish it off. And you can just create a little knot here with your needle and then I'm going to do a couple more. Let's do it again. Knot at the end. Right. Go down, so you're creating a loop. But don't keep it loose. Where do you want the leaf to go? I want it to go there, right? So 
I'm going to take my needle, stick it there. Whoops, take my loop. Everything's a little bit more unwieldy with a lampshade, but now pull through the rest of the needle and pull up and tighten. There you go. Your leaf. All right, now I'm going to do, these are gonna be little buds, and for the buds, I'm going to do the French knot stitch. And I think for the French knot stitch, I'm going to use my coral pink. Please, again, if I misname any of these stitches, join the conversation in the community section. But just be kind. That's all I ask. So for the French knot stitch, figure out where you want your little bud. One two, boop, isn't that adorable? Let's do that again. Up, one, two, and down around the same area where you popped up. I'm just gonna follow my little leaf, I mean, not my leaf, sorry, my stem. I think I'll do a line of them just here. And I might do a pink, white, pink, white, and start bringing in some white. See here, I'm because I'm gonna alternate. I'm gonna go back in with the white, so I'm leaving lots of space because I'm gonna come in and do white, white, white. any more embellishments to this I'm going to grab my base and my um, pillowcase for reference I just want to make sure that like I don't know that this this is plenty I'm not sure so let's do a gut check yeah you know what I I think I'm done I don't think I want to do much more I think that's just enough. It's cute, it's craftsy, it's cottagey for the lake house. I think that's plenty. So I think we're done. How about that? 
from old to new. Project in a day. Well, join us next Friday for our next adventure. Have a wonderful weekend and thanks for joining me.